Welcome to another V Brown Bag Build Day video here at Ravello in Israel. I'm joined once again by Amit. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Now, Amit, you're involved in the development of the Ravello platform and we wanted to have a little look at the different ways that CPU is presented up into uh, the, the hypervisor, the HVX hypervisor. And particularly as, as things have progressed, there's been a lot of performance improvements with the changes to, to how the CPU is presented up. Can you just run us quickly through the different ways that the underlying hypervisor sends CPUs to Ravello? Of course. So <clears throat> when we started, um, we had to develop our own hypervisor. It is called HVX. And it is optimized to run on top of other hypervisor. We use nested virtualization to allow running seamless workloads from the on-premise virtual environment on top of any public cloud. So the HVX was kind of a translation layer for us, an abstraction layer. Um, so we had to develop it from scratch, okay? And it worked, it worked by uh, using binary translation, which means that we had to look on every instructions every instruction one by one that the guest was going to run and decide whether it is safe to run or whether it needs to be changed. Okay, it is a, a familiar technique with many hypervisors, mm -hmm. uh, binary, binary translation. And, and this is where most hypervisors started in, in the beginnings of virtualization back right. 10, 10, 12 years ago. Exactly, uh, right. And it, it was... Um, it was uh, a challenge, uh, of course, implementing this, and we had to support all the, the instructions, uh, many, many uh, possibilities. All of the possible CPUs. And, yes. and back in the days of binary translation as being the primary way of doing virtualization, we couldn't get very large virtual machines. There were some challenges around scaling uh, virtual machines with that. Right. So. Um, the, there are some limitations using, uh, of course, uh, it might seem a little bit um, inefficient, but we had many optimizations in the HVX. We still use it. It's very, uh, it's very usable. And, uh, and uh, we had to put many optimizations in it. Uh, we cache instructions that we already mm -hmm. translate. We don't need to translate every instruction all the time. But when we go up with the CPUs, we're going from 8 to 16 CPUs, things start to get a little bit... Uh, it gets much harder to coordinate right. as you're going through that. Right. So uh, th there are some uh, issues involving CPU synchronization. And we, we've seen that ma making uh, the HVX hypervisor work for... Um, large number of CPUs could be a very challenging task. We are still working on, on it, mm. but it is not, um, a co not very cost efficient. So what we basically uh, moved to doing is in mo modern clouds, in some of the modern clouds, mm. we already have support for hardware assist, which means that the, the cloud instances themselves run on uh, CPUs that support um, running nested virtualization on top of them. For example, uh, Intel VTX or mm. AMD SVM. And by that, we can run instructions seamlessly directly on the CPU without needing to, uh, without the need to do translation. And this, this is where the, the underlying CPU adds another layer of privilege beyond right. where the operating system usually sits and the hypervisor sits in that higher layer of privilege. Right, exactly. So once we had that, we can use simply KVM. Okay, which is uh, a very uh, common hypervisor. You mm. use it in mm. other. Used in many of the public clouds you're running on top of. Exactly, exactly. So now we can run on these clouds, we run KVM on top of the clouds hypervisor, which is a KVM and, sometimes. And this is very much parallels what happened with running on top of physical CPUs. When those feature sets became available in the physical CPUs, we got huge leaps in the performance and the scalability of virtual machines. Mm. And now we're, we're seeing the same thing going on for the HVX hypervisor sitting on top of another hypervisor. It still right. freaks me out that we're doing a hypervisor on top of a hypervisor. And in, in some use cases, we run a hypervisor on top of that because you support ESXi on top of HVX on top of whatever the public cloud runs. I, I agree. But we also support uh, the bare metal instances, which are, are simply physical machines. And we run KVM directly on top of that. So this is only one layer on, of virtualization. Mm -hmm. But the difference in performance is not that big. The, the, it's only a, some small number of percents uh, different. So the, the big shift is from binary translation 
the hardware assisted. Right, right. The difference between the physical machine and running on nested virtualization on top of other virtual machine is not that big because of the nested virtualization support in the CPU. Right. So the number of layers become, becomes insignificant. Uh, and the the technique that virtualization technique is much more important for for at least for these workloads. And it's that that support for hardware assisted and bare metal that's driven Revelo to to be able to support the larger numbers of of CPUs per virtual machine, and presumably it, it has an impact on also the amount of memory exactly. that, that the VMs can. It, be it allowed us to it allowed us to easily use larger VMs without worrying about. Uh, supporting many new features in our own hypervisor. Because you simply pass them through from underneath. Right, right. right. So it's, it's much easy, easier. Excellent. And presumably this is the, the forward <coughs> direction for all of the Revelo. The, the strongest forward direction for the development is, is towards those hardware-assisted, um, much less engineering effort to, to make things work. I guess so. It's, it's very dependent on the cloud providers. But yes. as long as they will provide hardware assist, we can use the new technique so it, it will be better. And thank you for watching this vBrownBag Build Day video with Ravella. Keep watching the vBrownBag channel for more Build Day videos.